When you were made a new creation, you new creation, you, you got a different set of weapons, a different set of principles to live by. So why are you living like everybody else when you've got something that works beyond that? Internationally recognized for teaching and preaching the uncompromised Word of God, Bishop Clarence E. McClendon answers the prophetic and apostolic call upon his life by ministering the healing grace and miracle anointing of Jesus Christ around the world. By his preaching and teaching the uncompromised gospel of Jesus Christ, Bishop McClendon the teacher, the preacher, the apostle, and an anointed prophet sent to the nations being used by the power of the Holy Spirit has led to the healing and deliverance of millions around the world during his healing crusades and conferences. If you want to experience another level of worship, witness the healing power of Jesus, learn the uncompromised Word of God, confirmed by notable miracles, then we invite you to partake in the overwhelming power of the Holy Spirit by the moving of God's transforming grace. Colossians chapter 2 is where I want you to turn and uh, I want to uh, go a little uh, further uh, as the Spirit of the Lord has directed me uh, to share these truths with you. I've been teaching uh, a series, I think, for the last 100 weeks. Uh, <laughs> uh, I've been teaching a series, rather, for the last several weeks on the subject living above the world. And uh, I believe last week we got into a section of that teaching that we entitled Born From Above to Live Above. Once again, the principle being that those of us who are born again or literally again, that term born again is a sort of vernacular reading, but not a literal reading from the original Greek. It literally means to be born from above, and that is, an, is a significant distinction, because when you understand that it's not, just be, it's not being born again, but actually being born from above, you begin to understand that the purpose of the birth from above is so you can live above, or so that, and you can see above and so that you can see things beyond the basic principles of this world. These are some things that we've established, but I want to read and get you back into something that I had to leave you with last week for the sake of time. And uh, let's read in Colossians, let me get there, Colossians chapter 2 and verse number 8, which has been our golden text or the foundation for what we have been teaching these last few weeks. It says, beware, verse 8, Colossians 2, beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit. Now, once again, he's talking to the believer. He's talking to the man or woman who has been born again or born from above. He's talking to the new creation in Christ Jesus. Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. Now, once again, when he says here, according to the basic principles of this world, he articulates in verse number 20 of the same chapter that we, that is the new creation, died with Christ from the basic principles of this world. I want you to see that. Uh, uh, put it on the screen for the people to see because once again, he begins by saying here in verse 8, or where we're beginning, he says, make sure that nobody cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit, according to the tradition of men, or according to the basic principles of this world. The point being, as a new creation, if you reduce yourself to living only by the basic principles of this world, you will be being cheated in what you're supposed to be receiving and supposed to be experiencing in the new creation. And in verse 20, he says, therefore, if you died with Christ, 
from the basic principles of the world, why, as though living in the world, do you subject yourself to regulations? Now, it's not, it's not telling you and I to be lawbreakers. That's not the inference here. It is saying that the basic principles of this world, the principles by which the world operates, the principles by which the man or woman who is not in Christ operates are lower than the ones that you and I are called to operate in. And that in essence, we have been born from above so that we can know and see these things, these principles that are from above, which are the principles of God, the principles of the kingdom, so that we can put them into operation here in the earth and override the limitations that limit people that are only dealing with the basic principles of this world. Basically, he's saying, when you were made a new creation, you new creation, you, you got a different set of weapons, a different set of principles to live by. So why are you living like everybody else when you've got something that works beyond that? Now the problem is that most Christians, most new creations in Christ Jesus have not been taught what those principles are, what that weaponry is, and so we are reduced to living like everybody else because we don't know the principles and the weapons that were given to us from above. Are you still with me? So very quickly now, there is something here that is being put forward by the Spirit of God that you and I need to understand. Now, when I say understand, we need to cognitive, cognitively process it because we've all experienced it. And it is this, that the life that we were promised by the Father through the earthly ministry and finished work of Jesus. In other words, the life that God through Christ Jesus revealed to us that was ours and that we are supposed to live, the abundant life. Jesus says, John 10, 10, the thief comes not but to, for to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that you might have life. The Greek word there is zoe, which means the God level of life. God's kind of life. I've come that you might have life and that you might have that life, that Zoe life, more abundantly. In other words, I've come that you might have it and then that once you have it, oh God help this, I've come that you might have it and then once you have it that you might learn to work it to abundance. Did you get what I said? See, and the error, please hear me, the error that has been made by many, including myself, in days gone past, and many preachers today, is that this life that was promised us by the Father through the earthly ministry uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ and his finished work, many and most, in most cases, Christians have not been experiencing it as Christ followers, and the question is why? And the reason is, it's because of the message that we've preached. And, and, and see, we have preached a message that gets people through the door, but not gives them a picture of the house. We have preached a message that gives life to people, but does not teach them how to work the life they've been given. And, and because, because our message, you know, come to Christ and and this will happen. Come to Christ and that'll happen. Come to Christ and this will happen. And here's what happens. People come to Christ and most of that doesn't happen. Come on, say amen. They come to Christ, but the life that they were promised by God doesn't ever show up. And then the question is, wait a minute, what's going on? You said this would happen. You said this would happen. You said this would happen. What's going on? Now, Paul addresses this, and we've been over this ground, so I'm going to go through it very quickly because i got to get somewhere else. But Paul addresses this, once again, in this passage where he goes on to say, now look at verse number 9, for in him, he says, make sure you, no one cheats you according to the basic principles of this world and not according to Christ or not according to what has happened for you in the anointed one, meaning you become a new creation, and what will happen for you in the anointing. See, because all of the principles of the new creation 
are revealed in and by and through the anointing. The anointing is how you access the principles. The principles work by the anointing. So all, did you hear what I just said? All of this weaponry, all of these principles are revealed, they are demonstrated, they are accessed and work by the anointing. Glory to God. It's very important, ah, very important for you to understand. Very important for you to understand. And see, when you understand that, oh, oh here's, a, here's a beautiful truth. When you understand that, you will understand why even though Jesus, thank you, Holy Ghost, I, I never saw it. You will understand, even though Jesus was sent to us from above, he did no miracles until he was anointed. Why? Because being born from above is not enough to manifest the life. You didn't get it. I'm going to say it again. Being born from above is not enough to manifest the fullness of the life that you're to access. It requires the anointing. And when Jesus of Nazareth becomes anointed of the Holy Ghost, he becomes Jesus the Christ. Yes, sir. Uh, Jesus, the anointed one. Now that's a picture. So this is why Paul says, now go to Ephesians 1. Eh, well, no, let me, let me, I need to read the rest of this in Colossians because I just got to get the phrase in your mind again. And not according to Christ. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. In him you were also circumcised with the circumcision made without hands by putting off the body of sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, in that immersion, in which you were also raised with him through faith in the working of God. So, so faith in the working, or again, the King James Bible says the operation of God. So it is this faith in the operation of God that is required to begin living this life. It's not just, oh, please hear me. See, it's not just faith in Jesus the person. It is... And I need you to understand, because I'm not taking anything away from Jesus. He is Lord. He is Messiah. He is King. I can't wait to get to heaven and see him and worship him and thank him. But this is the revelation of Scripture. This is not Clarence McClendon's doctrine. It is this, that these things are not accessed just by the worship of Jesus the man. You must understand the operation of God or the operation of him who raised him. Because only then, that's why he says, this, this, this is made accessible to you by faith in the operation of God. Faith in what God worked. Faith in what, he, what occurred. And so you cannot exercise faith in it if you don't know what was worked. And if preachers don't preach and teach what was worked, you will have a church that is still operating by faith in the person of Jesus and not in the operation of God. And faith in the person of Jesus will get you to have eternal life but won't teach you how to work it. Did you get what I just said? Boy, this is death. So now go to Ephesians 1. Now this is why Paul, and again, I'm going to read this to you quickly because we've been over it because I've got to get somewhere else. i got to. Uh, Ephesians 1. And he said, well, Bishop, if you've got to get somewhere else, then why don't you just go there? Uh, because, uh, you know, you've you got to do this line upon line, precept upon precept. And since the last time I talked to you, you've been barraged by a thousand lies. And I've got to get truth to you and recalibrate you because you're supposed to be seeing some stuff begin to manifest now and I'm talking about things beyond your abilities watch it now Ephesians 1 verse number 15 everybody say the words faith in the operation say it again faith in the I'm talking to you sitting there in your couch say faith in the operation okay watch this now so in Ephesians chapter 1 
And verse 15, Paul says, Therefore also since I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, get it, your faith in the Lord Jesus, your faith in the Lord Jesus, and your love for all the saints, I do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. And, and verse 17 begins with what he's praying. So watch it. He's saying, since I heard you have expressed faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, which is the entry point, he says, now I've started praying for you that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, do you get it? Now that, you, that you're, you, you have faith in Christ, I'm praying that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. I'm praying now that you get revelation knowledge about this Christ. I'm praying that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened because once you get revelation about this Christ, you're going to know what the hope of his calling is. Watch this. What are the riches of the going of his inheritance in the saints? In other words, what he's invested in you. Verse 19, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us? Once you begin to get revelation knowledge flowing about what God did, about the operation of Christ, about what God did when he raised him from the dead, about that operation of the finished work, what happened not just to him, but to you through his death, burial, resurrection, ascension, and seating. He says, once you begin to get revelation knowledge about this, watch it. He said, you're going to begin to understand what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards you. You're going to know more about the power that is flowing towards you. Watch this. According to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead. Now, I love this because Paul says, not only am I telling you what you're going to get, I'm pointing you to the destination to find out what it is. Because the power that is flowing towards you, available to you, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, is according to the power that God worked in Christ when he raised him. So he's saying, you need to know what happened through that process because what happened to him happened for you because you were together through the whole process. Ooh. See, I'm going to say this as cautiously as I can. Some people will consider me a heretic for saying so. Others will get it. And it is this. That faith in the Lord Jesus Christ is exhorted for you and I to have because if you exercise your faith in what God did for him, then you also know what he did for you. I'm, I'm going to say it again. Because you were together through the whole process. See, religion has taught us well, trust in Jesus. Trust in Jesus. Oh, that's, yes, but that's part of it. Because trusting in Jesus means trusting in the work of the father who raised him because what the father who raised him worked for him he also worked for you at the same time so actually trusting in the lord jesus will also result in you learning to trust you you know you didn't get what i just said you, 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 you. It, 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 will, it, will, it, will also, it will also teach you to trust your impressions. Your, your, see, see y'all, some of y'all, I, I can see some of you looking at me through the lens. Heresy, heresy, read. All the way back in the book of Proverbs. Let me, let me, show, let me, let me show you a proverb that most of you haven't read. Or, or, or if you have read it, you read by it, like, oh, that's nice. Uh, Go to Proverbs 12, verse number 5. Proverbs 12, verse number 5. <laughs> look, what, look, look what Proverbs 12, verse number 5 says. Proverbs 12, verse number 5 says, The thoughts of the righteous are right. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, wait, well, that's referring to Jesus. It, it, it's a small r. And the Bible declares, 
through the finished work of Jesus, that you and I are the righteousness of God in him. So if the thoughts of the righteous are right, and I've been made the righteous of God, as long as I am walking with him, I can trust what I'm thinking. I'll never forget when the Spirit of God taught me years ago, and I was wondering, well, God, is that you or is that me? And he said, it doesn't matter. <laughs> because I have made you right with me. You can trust what you think. If you are filling your spirit with God's word, if you are praying, if you are praying in the spirit, if you are praying the will of God, God says you can trust what you think. And see, what you don't understand is the miracles that were wrought by those apostles and the signs and wonders were not done by people who were constantly questioning themselves. They were accomplished by men and women who got a revelation of who they were in Christ and they learned to trust the download. Yes, see, I'm talking about new creation reality. I know a lot of the church isn't ready for this. Turn me off. I'll get to you next year. You will come, though. You will come here because this is where God is taking his people. And this indecision, wishy-washy, limp-wristed, I don't know what to do. No, 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 no. No, no. Over! Watch it. Watch it. Now, you, 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 can, you, can, now, you, can, you, you can disagree with me, but then you have to disagree with this word. Because I just showed you, it says, the thoughts of the righteous are right. Are you righteous? Now, now see, someone say, well... Does that mean I can just trust anything I think? No, look, if you haven't been praying, if you haven't been staying in the Word, if you're not getting the mind of God, you better not trust what you think. <laughs> Amen. But I'm talking about people who are walking with God, who actually want the will of God done, who actually want the desire of God done, who actually are in a situation and that I don't know what to do, and you're waiting for a word from God, and God is telling you the thoughts of the righteous are right. Do what you're thinking and do what's in your spirit to do. And God says, if you want my will to be done, if you make an error, I'll correct it. Because your heart was right. Oh, I don't know who that was for. That is not in my notes. Stay with me. Ephesians 1, go back. I don't even know how I got there. See, that's that prophetic anointing. That's why I can't get through a lesson because y'all got problems. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. That was a joke. Ephesians 1, 15. We all have things we've got to get through. One, well, look at this. Ephesians 1, verse 15. <laughs> Watch this. Therefore, I, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, the old brother says, I do not cease to make mention. Watch what he says now. He says, I'm praying that you will get a revelation, an insight, of the power that is being made available to you. And he's saying this is the same power that God worked in Christ Jesus when he raised him and when he seated him at his right hand in heavenly places. So this power begins operating at the new creation. Are you there? Notice what he says. He says the, the power... <laughs> And what is the, look at verse 19, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised it. Not when he crucified him, when he raised it. This power began working at the new creation. Why? Because it is for the new creation. And he is the first fruit of that new creation. And you and I are completing him. So, Go quickly now to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4. Ephesians chapter 2. Just go turn the page. Now, <laughs> once again, in Ephesians chapter 1, Paul is saying this is what must be seen by every believer who wants to manifest eternal life or wants to walk in it. In Ephesians chapter 2, he's saying now this is what God did for you and I in Christ Jesus. Look at verse 4. But God who is rich in mercy... Because of his great love with which he loved us, 
Even when we were dead in trespasses and sins, made us alive together with Christ, by grace you have been saved. We went through that last week. And raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So this is what God did. He raised us up together. Now what does that mean? Once again, remember Romans 6 teaches that we were together through the whole process. So if he raised us up together, that means that the state and the status that Jesus has when he is raised is also given to you because you're being raised together. Are you there? The status that he has is given to you. This is grace. See, we only apply grace to what God does for us when we sin. We don't apply grace to what God did for us in Christ Jesus. See, because that's what you actually received without merit. That's what you actually got by favor undeserved. He did it you get it. Watch it. Watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it. He seated us, even when we were dead in trespasses and sins, he made us alive together, so you've been made alive with Christ, and raised us up together, so you were raised up with Christ, and made us sit together, so you were seated with Christ. Now again, these are matters and issues of legal status status before God. Whenever you see the scripture talk about what you and I have in him, or it says in Christ you are this, in him you are that, in him you are this, what is being told you, and I'd write this down if I were you, what is being told to you there is how you are being seen by the Father in his eyes. In other words, whatever it is saying about Christ, it's saying because you are with Christ, you have been given this status by grace, and this is how the Father is seeing you. Do you get it? Do you get it? So when, when it says, in him you have this, in him you have that, we'll get to a couple of them in just a moment. What it's saying is, in the Father's eyes, this is you already without meriting it. In the Father's eyes, this is you already without you performing for it. Become a digital disciple of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Word teaches that great grace comes with the boldness of spreading the gospel. You can find our YouTube channel by simply typing in on your search engine and there on your screen, the message of grace and truth will be on demand. Will you have the boldness to subscribe and share? Be bold and share the message of the cross with your network.